Medical students are known for their insane note-taking superpowers and hence note-taking has really become this mantra in medical school. So is note-taking really that beneficial and important for our learning? Let's break this down. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Oslo in Norway. On this channel, I talk about life as a medical student in Norway as well as other valuable stuff such as productivity and effective studying based on evidence and science. So if that sounds interesting, and make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. For the sake of a better structure, I'll be dividing this video into four major chunks. Firstly, I'll talk about the science or evidence behind note taking. Secondly, I'll talk about taking notes during lecture and taking notes after your lectures and why I believe that this is basically pointless. Thirdly, I'll talk about when are notes actually effective. And fourthly, I'll end the video with a summary and a conclusion. And since time is the most precious thing in the world, you will find the timestamps in the description box below so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch. Now, tons and tons of research has shown that how active recall and space repetition are the two most effective strategies for studying. There was an extensive research conducted by Professor John Nalowski and his team where they tested and rated the most effective and ineffective study techniques. For example, rereading, highlighting, active recall, space repetition, categorization, and also the act of summarizing. And the act of summarizing is basically the same as note-taking because the way most students, including myself, back in the days, the way I would talk, take notes and the way most people or most medical students I know of take notes is that they sit down with their laptops and then they have the book open, right, or the textbook open, and then basically they read the chapters or the, or the paragraphs in the book and they write down that paragraph in their notes or in their own words. So you are basically reading a textbook firstly and then secondly you are summarizing that in your own words which is basically what we call note-taking, right? Professor Danowski's research rated the act of note-taking as fairly low utility and the main reason behind this was because the art of note-taking is fairly passive and learning needs to be effortful because the more effortful or the harder the learning process is, the better or the more likely we are to retain that information in our long-term memory. And if you want to know more about this, then you can either check out my videos, videos on active recall and space repetition, or I, I believe that every, every single student should read this book called Make a Stake by Peter C. Brown, which is like the Bible of effective study. Hence the point being that the act of note-taking is relatively passive and it's not really that effective as we normally like to think. So I would rather be spending time on other techniques such as active recall and space repetition than spending hours and hours on a technique or on the act of note-taking which is not really that effective. Now the way I think about note-taking is that there are mainly two purposes for taking notes. Firstly, taking notes during class and secondly, taking notes after class or after your lectures when you are self-studying. So when it comes to taking notes during class, I think this is a pretty smart thing to do given the fact that you're doing it right. And this is because when you're having four or five or six lectures every single day and you are just sitting there passively and listening to the lecture or the professor talk, it's really easy to sort of wander off or doze off into, into your own thoughts, you know, and just stop paying attention, even though you are passively hearing what the professor is saying, you're not really processing that information. So given this situation, I think it's a really smart idea to be doing something actively and processing that information which, which you are being told in order to stay awake and stay focused focused during class and keep yourself engaged because personally it has happened to me multiple times that I am sitting there in the lecture watching or hearing the lecture or the professor speak and then I suddenly just doze off into my own thoughts you know start thinking about other stuff so I think taking notes during class is a smart thing to do because it helps you stay awake and secondly keeps you focused and you know helps you process information in a much better way and then again it's fairly common that we have students or people who sit in a lecture and literally transcribe every single word that the professor is saying now this is obviously not a good strategy because you end up with tons and tons of notes which you have to go through afterwards and secondly this process is also much more passive compared to let's say handwritten notes during a lecture which is what, what I personally prefer and this is because when you you are handwriting your notes you are writing much less and when you're writing much less you are forced to process the information much more and really you know create these connections or arrows diagrams and all the stuff and think more intensely and this 
is again much more passive compared to just simply sitting down and typing out everything that the professor is saying. And that was the act of taking notes during class or during lecture. And let's talk about taking notes after class when you are self-studying, let's say in the library or at home, and you're basically studying for the topic that you just had the other day. And I believe that this is where note taking is pretty pointless. And now you must be like, whoa, 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 this is blasphemous content. How dare you say that? Let's report him on YouTube. Now just take a deep breath and think about it. So there are tons and tons of online resources available in medical school and there are so many people who have published their online notes and then again we have our seniors in medical school which which have taken tons and tons of notes as well so when there are so many people who have already done this work for us then why bother doing that same work again and i believe that this is pretty much how everything in life basically works so there are people who do something for you and Hence, you don't have to do that work all by yourself. For example, if you're out there wanting to, I don't know, buy a car, right? You go to a showroom and you simply buy a car that you like. You do not um, start making a car, start manufacturing a car just because, well, I want to make a car that suits my exact needs, right? Because you just go to the showroom and choose anything that suits your needs instead of building a car or manufacturing a car from scratch. So I think this applies to, t to the act of note taking as well. And when there are so many people who already have done that work for us, then why would you bother doing that same work all over again? But then there's this argument that, okay, well, when I take my own notes, I know exactly how everything is structured and I am precisely familiar with the, with the organization of those notes as well. And hence, I want to take my own notes. Fine, that's a pretty decent argument. But then again, you have to look at the price value proposition, right? How much are you exactly paying? Because what you're paying is your time. The price is your time, which you are spending taking these massive notes. And the value that you're, that you're getting out of this is the learning aspect. How much are you actually learning from the act of taking notes, right? How much is that really worth in terms of learning? So try and analyze the price value proposition. And when we look at evidence or when we look at the research that has been conducted, then that's, that's shows that the price value proposition is fairly low when it comes to note taking because you are spending tons and tons of passive time taking these notes and the value that you're getting is arguably less than other active techniques such as active recall and space repetition. Because then again, apart from the time consuming aspect of note taking, I believe that note taking really gives us this false sense of accomplishment when we're taking notes because when we're sitting there typing out these notes from the book and you know summarizing everything in our own words, it feels quite productive and really effective. Whereas it's not really that effective in terms of evidence, right? Because if you, let's say, test yourself on those notes or whatever, whatever you have made, I don't know, three days later, then you've probably forgotten more than 90% of whatever you wrote down in that document. And secondly, when you're also taking these notes, right, you're not really worried about, worried that much about the understanding of that material. What you're basically doing is that you're taking these notes and thinking that, okay, now I have all these notes ready for these and these topics. All I now need to do is that when the exams come closer, I need to open up these notes again and just start rereading or reading through these notes. So it sort of delays our learning because we're just simply making notes in order to access them later on, instead of really focusing on the understanding of the material right now, here, and while studying. Now, obviously, I'm not completely against the act of taking notes because there are instances and examples of situations where note taking is extremely effective. For example, when you're writing, let's say, a thesis or an essay in psychiatry or psychology or whatever it may be, right? Because then you have to read these online articles and research papers. And when you're reading all of these and, you know, it's a good idea to combine or to write down notes uh, from these research papers or on online essays so that you can compile these notes into a simple document, into your thesis or into your essay later on. So in this situation, let's say it would make good sense to take notes from these um, articles and research papers that you are reading online. Now, even though I completely stopped taking any notes last year in third year of medical school, I still do take notes at times during the exam season uh, while practicing active recall. And the way I practice active recall is again different when it comes to normal days compared to the exam season because normally when it's not the exam season i simply read my active recall questions and i answer them either in my head or just say the answer out loud however during the exam season what i do is that i try and make a mind map or a spider diagram or just write everything down on my ipad about a certain disease before i start doing those active recall questions and this is because during the exam season i really want to test myself even further and see how much i can remember about a disease even before i start looking at my 
active recall questions. And this is because even though questions are extremely effective, they still do end up giving us minor hints about the about the answer. For example, if the question is how does left-sided heart failure re lead to right-sided heart failure. Well, obviously, this has given me the hint that, okay, left-sided heart failure does lead to right-sided heart failure. The, the real question is, can I even remember that left-sided heart failure is a major cause of right-sided heart failure without having a look at my questions. So yeah, that's how pretty much I take notes during the exam season, that before I start doing my active recall questions, I just write down or make a mind map of whatever I know about a certain disease or about a certain topic before I can start look at my, looking at my questions. In short, here's my take on note taking. Firstly, it's pretty effective when you are taking notes during class because it helps you stay awake and stay engaged. And I also prefer to do this uh, by writing them on my iPad on the PDF instead of just randomly typing out every single word or transcribing everything that the professor is saying. And also there is plenty of evidence which shows that how typing out your notes is less effective compared to handwritten notes, but that's a topic for a future video. And secondly, I believe that taking notes after class is pretty much pointless because firstly, a lot of people have already done that work for you. For example, your seniors, just go and ask them for their notes or other online resources that are available to every medical student. Apart from that, it's also extremely, extremely time consuming and sort of delays our learning by giving us this fake sense of accomplishment because all we are really doing is that we are taking these notes for though in order for these notes to be accessible to us when the exams come closer instead of really focusing on the understanding of these topics or a certain, I don't know, these notes right now, right here, when you are um, working on the subject. However, there are instances where note taking can be super effective. For example, if you are writing a thesis or an essay, or if you are practicing active recall by taking notes. So instead of answering out your active recall questions loudly or in your head, you are writing the answers by making mind maps or whatever. So yeah, I think there are situations where note taking can also be very effective. Again, these were just my insights on the act of note taking based on evidence and research. Uh, but still, I'm not here to tell you what you must do. Just do whatever works best for you. And if you feel that note taking has really, you know, improved your learning experience, then by all means, go for it. That's our wrap for today, Sapiens. I hope you found the video useful. And if you did, then you might also want to check out this video, uh, which will surely add some value to you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.